There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise ships do it I go wild. Car 54, where are you? Tonight's program brought to you by Cam A. Secret of Soft Skin. And by Lava, the soap that gets hands clean right down to the fingernails. Hello, Zimmerman's Bavarian Roof Garden. I would like to speak to Mr. Zimmerman. Don't forget to mention the olives. Do you want to handle this? I'm up to here already with the banquet. I just asked. Last year, he shortchanged us on the olives. Okay, I appoint you an olive committee of one. After the banquet, you'll count the pits. You happy? Hello, Mr. Zimmerman. This is Patrolman Leo Schnauzer again. Don't hang up. Two of our patrolmen, Tootie and Muldoon, are out sick. So make it 45 chicken a la king dinners for sure, and two maybes. I'll keep you posted. Tootie and Muldoon out? Two days before the banquet, they get sick. Why can't they be like everybody else and get sick right after the banquet? I don't understand, Doc. Just because two of my men called in, said they had a little fever, a police surgeon has to come all the way up here from headquarters? Don't be naive, Captain. They've been partners for ten years, and all through the years, they're always sick together. Tootie is sick, Muldoon is sick. Those things happen. I know, we have a medical name for it. Goofing off. <laughs> Time someone checked. Say, uh, uh, I don't understand. I would have called the doctor myself, but when the alarm went off for him to go to work this morning, he just lay there groaning with a stupid look on his face. He seemed perfectly normal to me. Do you mind? Do you mind? Inhale. Why don't you want to look in the eyes first? Dr. Ben Casey, he always looks in the eyes first. That's his dream part. Please. On the other hand, uh, Dr. Kildare, he's a tongue looker. Even before they're out of the ambulance, broom, he goes right for that tongue. Quiet. I remember one case where Dr. Gillespie said to him, enough with the tongue. Why don't you look in the man's ear? Please, inhale. What was that case? Will you be quiet? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I remember the case. Will you shut up? Is it serious, Doctor? just a 24-hour virus. I could have told you that. You could? My partner, Muldoon, he called me up and he told me that's what we got. He told you that's what you got. Fine. Now open your mouth. I have to take your temperature. Uh, don't bother. My temperature is exactly 101.6 and a half. 101.6 and a half. Yeah. My partner, Muldoon, just called me and told me that's what our temperature is now. <laughs> Do you mind if I check? Go right ahead. Now, a shot of penicillin will uh -oh. be... I don't take penicillin. Why, are you allergic? Allergic? No. But my left ear blows up. Your left ear? Yeah. All right. <laughs> what is it, doctor? 101.6 and a half. 101.6 and a half. What's the matter, doctor? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> it's just one of those crazy coincidences. <laughs> well, a shot of penicillin will fix you. You can take penicillin, can't you? Oh, sure. Good. Except my left ear blows up. <laughs> What's the matter, Doctor? Sultan and Raja. Sultan and Raja? That's right, Sultan and Raja. Oh, yes. That's the experiment they carried out at the University of Calcutta on the theory of monobiopsychosis. That's right, the two oxen were yoked together for ten years. Monobiopsychosis. <laughs> two bodies, one brain. <laughs> You'll notice if one became ill, the other became ill. Look, same temperature, same blood pressure. If one twitched his tail, the other did. If one mood, the other mood. Terrible thing. Well, fortunately, it only happens to animals. Chief, I'm not so sure. Hmm? What do you mean? Here are the records of two patrolmen of the 53rd Precinct, Tootie and Muldoon. What are you getting at? Chief, for the last ten years, Tootie and Muldoon have been practically yoked together side by side in a patrol car. If one is sick, the other is sick. It's fantastic. Always the same temperatures, same allergies. Forget about it. But, Chief, if you'll just give me permission to observe them. Absolutely not. All we need is the news to leak out that we think our patrolmen are turning into oxen. But, Chief, that's all. My 
Wiesner. Yes, sir. If it's going to make you happy, go along and observe. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just pretend I'm not here, boys. I just want to check and make sure there's no after effects of that virus. Right, Doc. Identical. It was like sitting in an ox cart behind Sultan and Raja. They're making out their reports now. I'm going to keep them under constant observation. I'm even going up to the locker room when they change their clothes. Our whole police system is based on teamwork. If there was even a hint that these teams were turning into herds. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll grab somebody and pretend I'm examining him up there. Well, Doctor, back again, I see. Who is it this time? Yeah. What's the matter? I don't know yet. But just to make sure, I'd like to examine you up in the locker room. <laughs> I felt better in my life. Captain, come in. Here's the seating arrangement. I resign. All we asked was to change to a different table. It's just a little change. Just a little change. Three weeks I was up all night planning the seating arrangement. First, O'Hara wouldn't sit at Sergeant Sweeney's table. Their wives don't talk. So I put O'Hara at the Steinmetz table next to Feingold's mother. Now Feingold comes to me and tells me his mother is hard of hearing. And if she don't sit next to somebody with a loud voice, she'll fall asleep. So I have to go to table 16 to get a loud voice to sit next to Feingold's mother. The loud voice turns out to be Sergeant Abrams, whose wife is wearing the same dress as Mrs. O'Hara. So I switch the O'Hara's to table 19 and put the Svensons at the Jensen table. So everything's fine. So what happens? Feingold calls me up and tells me his mother just got a hearing aid. And if that loudmouth Abrams sits next to her, he'll blow her eardrum out. <laughs> You're gonna sit where it says you're gonna sit. Did you hear me? Hold it down, will you, boys? <laughs> Sorry, Captain. It's out. Look, Doctor, if there's something wrong. It's nothing, nothing. <laughs> Found something wrong, huh, Doctor? Nothing, nothing. Nothing. Well, say, boys. Yes, yes, Captain. The team relieving you was called on special duty at the UN. You'll have to go right back on. Sure thing, Captain. I better call Lucy until I won't be home for dinner. Yeah. Uh, I'll change our schedule. Doctor? Say, ah. Uh... Uh... <laughs> Hello, Lucia. We pulled extra duty tonight, so I won't be home for dinner. I'll eat dinner with Maldon, like always. But the laundry man is there. You want me to hang out? Sure. Sultan and Raja. Ooh, ooh. I love animal stories. <laughs> Two oxen yoked together for 10 years. 
What's written on this margin here? Same as Tootie in Muldoon. <laughs> they flick their tails at the same time. <laughs> Tootie and Muldoon scratch their heads at the same time. <laughs> Conclusive evidence of monobiopsychosis. Two bodies, one brain. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hello, Sam. Oh, yeah. Uh, look, uh, I'm coming home for dinner. No, I'm not eating with Muldoon. Must we do everything together? <laughs> Make corned beef and cabbage. I know it smells up the neighborhood, but I got a yen for corned beef and cabbage. Goodbye. Hey, you and Muldoon are back, huh? Yeah. Takes more than a virus and I got a couple of oxes like you. What made you say that? What made me say what? Did you notice anything? What's going on? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I... I'll see you out in the car. This guy's flipping. Hello, Andy? I gotta call my mother and tell her I'll be late. Yeah, will you get me my house? so much time observing you, but these virus cases can get serious. Just pretend I'm not here. <laughs> well, aren't you going to make out the time check? You make it out. No, you make it out. Well, somebody's got to make it out. Okay. okay I'll, I'll do, do it. it. <laughs> later when I'm alone. Me too. I like to do a lot of things alone. Beautiful dream. If you feel like singing, go right ahead. What you sing alone? I don't feel like singing. Are you sure you don't want to sing? No. You sure you don't want to sing? No. Good. Good. Beautiful dream. I thought you said you didn't feel like singing. I didn't. I only sang because I thought you didn't want to sing. I sang because I thought I was singing alone. I love to sing alone a lot lately. <laughs> Me too. Beautiful. <laughs> of course they're struggling to be different. They're human beings. Instinctively, they demand to be individuals. All right, if you want to keep observing them for a while, go ahead. You'll just prove to yourself that a man is not an ox. This is the last straw. The last straw. After 10 years of sitting together with Muldoon at every function, suddenly you want to sit somewhere else? That's right. Change me to another table. Separate you and Muldoon? It took me two weeks to figure out the arrangement, so it came out boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, boy. <laughs> Ten years of boy, boy is enough. And if you don't change me, I'm not coming. Doctor? You're all right. How can I be all right if you keep examining me? You're all right. Well, <laughs> now what? Now what? All I asked was, what is Gunther eating at the banquet? Chicken a la king. I'll have lamb chops. Lamb chops? He wants lamb chops. Come on, Muldoon, it's a package deal. Yeah, we're all eating chicken a la king. Sure, and we all wear the same uniforms. And all day we sit next to each other in the same car, make out the same reports, sing the same songs. Do we have to eat the same things? We're individuals, not oxen. <laughs> Did you hear him? Did you see how he opened up a mouth? Lamb chops. What's the matter with that Muldoon? Who knows? <laughs> hey, Leo. Yeah. 
Well, I'm glad you explained it, Doc. Not that I was worried, but after reading about Sultan and Raja... My I... fault. I just jumped to conclusions. But after all, everything you do is so similar. I know. You see, Doctor, it's Gunther. I'm kind of smarter than he is, and he kind of looks up to me. I'm what you could call his, uh, idol. <laughs> so he keeps copying everything I do. Very common in close friendships. Sorry I scared you. I better explain it to Tootie. Hey, Leo. Yes, Captain. I haven't been feeling too well lately. You haven't? No, so at the banquet tomorrow night, just put me down for some crackers and milk. Crackers and milk? <laughs> oh, no, schnauzer. It's nothing serious. It's just... It's just that I haven't been feeling too well lately. Crackers and milk? <laughs> Oh, actually, I knew what this was about all the time. You did? Yeah. You see, Muldoon is a wonderful guy and my best friend. But he has no personality. <laughs> Me, I'm a natural born leader. And he sort of idolizes me. And he copies everything that I do. Oh, he does? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you ready to go? Yeah. Sorry I scared you, fellas. In case anything comes up, you can reach me down at headquarters. What a relief. Not that I was worried about that Sultan and Raja report, but... How about those two stupid oxes? <laughs> when they fed Sultan in New Delhi, Raja burped in Bombay. <laughs> See, what are you having for dinner tonight? Corned beef and cabbage. Corned beef and cabbage? You only have that on Wednesday nights. Yeah, I know, but I had a yen for it tonight. Come on. You're late tonight. What's that? Oh, I stopped off and I got some Chinese food. Chinese food? But we're having corned beef and cabbage for dinner tonight. Uh, throw it out. We're having Chinese food for dinner. <laughs> throw it out? <laughs> throw it out? Gunther, are you out of your mind? Are you going to stand around and argue, or are you going to get some plates for this? But Gunther, you called me up and insisted that I make corned beef and cabbage for dinner. I killed myself to get it done. Oh, is it done? Yes. Good. Throw it out. But Gunther, you called up, you insisted. Are you going to get some plates, or do you want this in your lap? But why? I'll tell you why. Because right now, Muldoon is eating corned beef and cabbage for dinner. And that's why we're having Chinese food. Perhaps I still don't understand. Just because you think Gunther is having corned beef and cabbage tonight. Please, Mother, don't ask any more questions. Just eat your egg roll. Yes, dear. <laughs> Gunther, will you stop fighting it? Sit down and watch television. No. That copycat Muldoon, he knows that I'm watching television, and that's what he's probably doing right now. Gunther, will you at least give me a clue about what's going on? Look, Lucia, I gotta figure out something that Muldoon in his wildest imagination would never figure that I'd be doing. I... Ooh. Ooh. What is it? I gotta... I'm gonna read a book. At last, my husband is going to read a book and I've got no witnesses. Don't make a big deal out of it. I enjoy reading a book. I always read books. I hope this isn't sad like the last book I read, that Black Beauty. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter? What if he's sitting like this and reading a book? Are you enjoying your reading, dear? I haven't been reading. I've just been thinking. That sneak knows I read a lot. What if he's reading a book tonight? Oh, that's the way he crosses his legs. I'll read standing up. Oh, what am I saying? That's the way he'd probably read a book, standing up, like the ox he is. I gotta think this thing out. If an ox had a book, what's the one way he couldn't read it? I know. Really, Francis, I don't understand your behavior tonight. Mother! Mother! Coming! <laughs> Francis! Uh, please, Mother, hand me the book. <laughs> Francis! Please, the book. <laughs> Have 
seen that police surgeon around today? No. How are you feeling, Captain? Oh, much better, much better. Uh, forget about the crackers and milk. Put me back on chicken a la king, just like everybody else. Forget about the crackers and milk. It took me two hours to argue with Mr. Zimmerman. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, nothing, nothing. Just what the precinct needed, a breath of Paris in the spring. Do you mind? Do you mind if somebody wants to dress like an individual, not part of a herd? <laughs> What's going on? What's... I woke up this morning and just sort of had a whim. <laughs> What's going on? You're asking me? Copycat? You're a copycat. I'm a copycat. <laughs> Who told you I was going to dress this way? Nobody. I just woke up and felt like dressing like this. And I felt like... Francis! What the... <laughs> we both felt <laughs> Don't matter. We gotta stay calm. Take it easy. My neck hurts. Your neck hurts? Yeah, I was reading a book last night. How could you hurt your neck reading a book? You wouldn't believe it, but I was standing on my... <laughs> we gotta go call that doctor. Yes, dear. Yeah. Oh, I feel much better now. No, I didn't hear anything from downtown, so no news is good news. <laughs> you know, I think the whole thing was just in my mind. Captain, this is Dr. Metz, Chief Medical Officer. We have to see you immediately. It's very important. Dear, the will is in the safe deposit box. <laughs> the Benevolent Association will take care of everything else. Yeah. I love you very much. Yes, gentlemen? Something serious has come up. It's time you were told. Let's get it over with. How long have I got? What do you mean? Please, don't sugarcoat it. No hearts and flowers. Give it to me straight. Okay. <laughs> Tuddy and Muldoon are in trouble. You see, Captain, they saw a medical report and imagined themselves into a mental state. You mean I'm all right? You're in perfect health, but Tuddy and Muldoon, they're imagining their close association has turned them into a pair of oxen. But I'm all right. <laughs> Captain, don't you realize the horror of it? Two of your men merging as one brain. Poor Tuddy and Muldoon. <laughs> but I'm all right, huh? Captain, we've got to do something quick. We must split up Tuddy and Muldoon. We must split up. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. I've tried it. It's impossible. They're such close friends. Close friends? But they're so different. Their lives are so different. Tuddy is, is married and Muldoon is a bachelor. That's it. What? We've got to get Muldoon married. Oh. Muldoon married? There's only one surefire, never-failing thing that breaks up the friendship between two men. Their wives. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Banquet tonight. Nicholson mentioned a cousin of his wife from Bismarck, North Dakota. <laughs> This is the best I could do. It's the best he can do. She should be here any minute. The bus from Bismarck was due an hour ago. If you think I'm standing around waiting for some drip that you picked up in North Dakota. <laughs> after all the girlfriends of mine that I've introduced you to. I don't even know what she looks like. Well, with your taste, I can imagine. Francis, Stay don't... away from him, Gunther. He wants to live a life of his own. Let him. Oh, Lucille. She's just not your type. Lucille, you never even met her. Now, you stay out of this. Excuse me. Where can I find Francis Muldoon? I'm Francis Muldoon. I'm Mrs. Nicholson's cousin, Linda McPherson. How do you do? Uh, How do you do? This is Mr. and Mrs. Tootie. How do you do? How do you do? Come this way, my dear. She's simply beautiful. No. Oh, my dear, we're never going to let you out of our sight. 
Doctor. Tonight's program brought to you by new push-button lilt, the only home permanent that waves your hair with foam. And by Gleam Toothpaste with the patented GL70 formula. There's a hold up in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do an idle wild. Car 54, where are you?